Hey guys, it's Booligan with Airsoft Retreat and BooliganAirsoft.com. Today we are taking our first look at the APS UAR, the Urban Assault Rifle. This is a original gun design by APS, manufactured through uh, Hokatsu and distributed through JAG Precision. And it is obviously a bullpup design carbine, and it is a very, very, very cool gun. It is one of the guns that I saw a few years ago at SHOT Show and was eagerly waiting for it to come out, and I'm thrilled that it has, and it has largely lived up to my expectations. I really like this thing. I'm going to go over a couple of reasons why I really like this thing. First off, it has a totally polymer body. However, it's largely one piece, and this thing's rock solid. All of the plastics on it have a nice textured finish. There's a few small seam lines, but nothing really to you know cause it a lot of problems. Um, being that it's a bullpup, your gearbox is in the back, and this gun uses a very simple version 3 gearbox. And it has a couple of cool features in the gearbox itself, like a quick change spring system, so you can just swap out the spring for either higher or lower powered one, and um, set it up either for CQB, field use, or even go a little crazy and build one of these things up into like a DMR platform. Um, it draws a lot of visual similarities, and there's a lot of people saying it's a poor man's Magpul PDR. I honestly like this design more than the PDR, a couple of reasons. First one, rails. I like mounting accessories on my gun. I like being able to customize my gun, gun for my particular taste and for whatever mission you will um, that I'm running it as. And this allows you to do that pretty easily. It's got you know, rail on the bottom, full sides. Got a nice top rail. One of the perks of this gun is that it is fully ambidextrous. It has this charging handle on the back that you'll notice actually locks, so you can access your hop up, and then the release button is up here, and it's kind of designed in a way that you can even activate it. With your cheek or your chin, if you like doing that, but um, this can actually be switched to either side simply by pulling this off, taking one pin out, back comes off. Off. There is a little deflector there that just gets swapped over to the other side, locks in place, goes back on, charging handle reinstalled, reinstalled this back piece, and your gun is now pretty much set up for left-handed operation. Still keeps the functional bolt catch, and the hop-up is adjustable on both sides. They designed it so that you could do that. That's something that I really like. They put a lot of thought into that and a lot of you know development time to make this gun fully compatible for left-handed users. It's not a real gun design. Yet. And I emphasize yet because apparently this thing's being shopped around by a couple of real steel manufacturers who like the design and say, hey, let's build it. It's got a sling mount. Comes with one metal unit that can be installed front or rear. And there are matching ports on both sides. One of the coolest features of this gun is the magazine release. Now, normally with a bullpup gun, you've got to reach back, actuate a button or something back there that you have to do in order to actuate the mag release. This one does not have that. It has, has a button back here that you can certainly use. Push the button, and the magazine pops out. However, it has buttons up here as well. So, if you're shooting, it's kind of hard to get that angle. Just push that with your shooting finger, the magazine pops right out. There's one on the other side as well. Push it, the magazine's released. There's a little spring unit inside that pushes the magazine out, helps it from getting stuck. However, it doesn't always just solidly eject these mags. Now, one of the things that a prior reviewer had noticed were issues fitting mag or fitting some brands of mid caps. There is a reason for this. Inside the mag well, the little ridge that coincides with the top of the magazine, it's a little bit short. It's almost like they custom designed it for these mags. However, I'm going to be experimenting with just dribbling away a little bit of material, and it should fit anything just fine. In the meantime, I was able to put um, star P mags in it just fine. No problem. They locked in place. I really only had issues with mag brand mid caps, and I think maybe one other off brand. Um, other than that, I, I didn't have any issues with mid caps in the gun. So it could have been an isolated case. He may have had you know, a lot of different ones to test out, but I didn't have that issue. And even then, it looks to be a quick fix to make it compatible with pretty much any magazine. Along with the ambidextrous magazine controls, you have ambidextrous selector switch. 
Selector switch is similar to an AK in that it is safe, full auto, and then semi. This is one of the issues that I had with the gun. And you'll notice that it's easy to switch from safe to full auto. That's easy to do with your thumb. However, switching it to semi-auto is hard. What I recommend is if you're just doing safe, full auto on that side, if you need to switch it to semi, bring your thumb around and just click it up. You can still keep target, you can still keep the gun pointed, you can do all of your controls like this. Alternatively, you can use your non-shooting hand to do those controls as well. It's really not that hard. Um, the gun does not include any iron sights. I've added a Seymour type optic of it on there and it's perfect height and I love it. This thing looks great on most guns and it really looks good on this gun. The battery compartment is this top section right here and we're going to do a quick fire test using a Tenergy 11.1 volt 1000 milliamp hour LiPo battery. But unfortunately, it's just a little bit too big to fit inside. The other issue that I have with the gun is the wiring for the battery is really short and sometimes you have to have a little small tool to kind of pull it out just a little bit to get it plugged in. So we'll do a fire test at the end of this once uh, I get it plugged in and I'll demonstrate how it sounds when it fires. Another issue that I had with the gun is disassembly. The gun is listed as being a toolless disassembly and for the most part it is. A couple of pins that you pop out, one, two, and three, and they are actually small holes for you to put it up there so you don't lose them. However, the flash hider has to be removed in order to disassemble the gun. Now, previous reviewer had looked at this and said, oh, it just unscrews. It doesn't. There's a set screw, which he did mention. However, the damn thing would not unscrew to save my life. And that's why you'll see the orange plastic. The tip's a little chewed up. This is a little chewed up. I couldn't get it off. And the problem is, is that it does have a small flat section at the base so you can get a wrench on it and really torque it. But the problem is, is you can't get to it without partially disassembling the thing in the first place. I don't know what they were thinking with that. It's just not a very good design. So what I ended up having to do, inside here there's a secondary little, um, I don't know what you call it, a knurled, kind of a, a knurled uh, nut that almost centers the barrel. I had to unscrew that and that would then allow me to split the whole gun up so that I could actually get a wrench on this and break it free. I mean, I had to whack the thing with a hammer. I mean, it was, it was on there really, really tight. It had a ton of glue on it. So it makes it a little hard because you can't disassemble the gun without taking this piece off. So that's not a design that I really like. However, once you get it off and, you know, it's easy to come off once you get it off once, really. It has standard 14 millimeter negative threads so you can attach any you know, barrel device you want. And, you know, you're, you're pretty, pretty good to go as far as customizing it. Plenty of rails, V3 gearbox, so you very easy to change. The package comes with two mags and they include an extra M120 spring for higher velocities. And we'll put some performance figures up at the end of this video. It's a really cool package coming in right around 200 bucks for a very unique gun that's soon going to be a real steel firearm. It's not one yet, but I expect this to happen soon. You have a small compartment in here for holding CR123 batteries, but it doesn't hold them very well. If you want to actually store them in there, I recommend putting a little bit of foam inside the grip and that way they'll hold a little bit more securely. But overall, I really, really like this thing. It's got a few small flaws to it, some things that probably should have taken care of, you know, been taken care of at the factory, but I like it. I'm a sucker for bullpups and for unique designs, and this thing has that in space. So let's go ahead and uh, take a quick look at how this thing fires. All right. We've got our Tenergy 11.1 volt, 1000 milliamp hour battery. Keep in mind, like I said, it's a little bit too big to fit in there. There's some ribs in there that maybe I'll sand them down a little bit to see if I can get this because this is kind of my baby. I love this battery. It's great for pretty much every gun. Just a little bit too big to fit in there. So on semi-auto, you have a long, deliberate trigger pull with a long reset. I mean, you got to pull the thing back all the way to there to get a fire, and you have to reset it all the way forward. That being said, Trigger response is pretty good. The gun sounds pretty good when firing. Switch it to full auto. And a lot of times my first shot off full auto will be semi-auto. This is the case. Release and now I'll have full auto. 
Um, this gun is apparently supposed to have, I don't know if it was a pre-production thing or not, but it was supposed to have a two-stage trigger where your first little bit is semi-auto and then it was going to come in a full auto afterwards. Mine doesn't have it, so I don't know if the other reviewer had a pre-production sample or what, but it's not like that on mine. As always, you want to decompress your spring after firing. On safe, trigger is mechanically blocked, so it cannot uh, fire. So the gun is certainly LiPo ready. It gets a decent rate of fire with a LiPo battery. Um, when combined with a perfectly reasonable velocity and the ability to change your FPS just by, you know, undoing one small part and installing a new spring, it's a great gun for pretty much any use. Um, it has a 6.04 Type 4 inner barrel with the moderately quick disassembly once you get that flash hider off the first time. It's a really cool gun really cool I really like the thing so if you're interested in a unique bullpup style weapon um, the APS UAR is a fantastic option and I want to give a big shout out to airsplat.com who sent this gun to review it is distributed through Jag Precision so any of their uh, companies they work with will have this thing and of course you know many thanks to both of them for their continued support of our review program but especially you know for Airsplat for sending this gun to review be sure to check out the full reviews on Airsoft Retreat and Booligan Airsoft.com and thank you for watching.